So this is my third video of pretending to know why I'm doing. Anyway, so I finished this book in my fourth hour today and I've been dying of talking about it ever since. And I need to lock my door. Or not. I'm almost home alone. I just have my deaf sister that likes leaving me presents. And let's just, fingers crossed that she won't be loud and I can talk as loudly as I want. Is I don't want my family or anyone I know to watch my crazy videos but you thanks for being here if you are there if I ever do get an audience thanks for being there anyways I want to talk about this book I love this book well this book is kind of a mess but it has great interesting ideas with it and it's a ride it's really is a ride um, if you did not know it's the sequel to this book and this bugs me like if you put them right next to each other they're different sizes just enough to be noticeable and this book is so skinny compared to this book and that bugs me it bugs me I think I have them facing the wrong way that bugs me also but that bugs me that they are different sizes because I want my books to be pretty I have a big thing for covers they say don't judge a book by its cover, but I do. I do like this cover, like by itself. It's great. I like that this could end in flames. That's cute. And Simon's great. And Baz is great. I also have the hardcover right here. And I don't really like, I prefer paperbacks just because I'm weird like that, but I do. I love this on the inside like the last one had stars but this time we get the daytime sky which I think is cute and I love this I think this is the only reason why I got it because I love this I love I love the shiny give me the shiny and I love that but it's not on the back here but anyways I'll take what I can get I'm huge on covers but I don't think I'm sorry and that hurts that really breaks me. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about the actual stuff in this book. Um, for my non-spoiler section, um, it was a decent book. If you love this book, why not read this book? Just because it's more Baz and Simon. Not at their best, not at their brightest, but it's more of them. And I like Baz and Simon and all the other characters in this book. This book is amazing. If you have not read this book already, read this book. It's so good. Oh my gosh. This book will be a thousand times better if the third book is a thousand times better. Well, not ten times better. If this the third book is ten times better, it will make this book 100% worth it. This is for some reason a case where it depends on the last book to make or break this book which is so weird to say but it's true and there has been a last book announced I do know that and I don't know when it's gonna be coming out I don't know why this book is called Wayward Son it was never brought up this one's kind of obvious they say carry on multiple times throughout the book and that makes sense but this one I don't I don't get why it's called Wayward Son but I mean I think that might be a phrase. Maybe British. I'm not British. I'm American. That's another thing about this book is that this book has a lot of stereotypical American country America, even though they weren't really in the southern part of America. I, they were in Arizona, right? They were in Nevada, definitely. Anyway, so quick picture of this book is um, Agatha is in danger. Simon is depressed. And um, um, Baz and Penelope drag Simon on a road trip across America to save Agatha. And it's a trip. And I liked it. I liked it after all. Overall, I liked it. I have to say I liked it. There are some parts I do want to brutally beat both Simon and Agatha with a stick. I liked, I made peace with Agatha in this book. I don't like everything she does in this book. But the last chapter made her for me. This book destroyed that. And 
I'll tell you why in a minute. So yeah, that's all for my non-spoilery. I can't really think of anything else I can say that's not a spoiler. But yeah, this book is great. The cover by itself is good, except for me put it next to this one. It's not even the same drawing style. Like, it's just noticeable enough. Yeah, I complain. I, I, I look too much in covers. Anyways, moving on. So yeah, spoilers now. <laughs> first things first. I love the idea that we get to see what happens to the Chosen One after the prophecy is fulfilled. Because I remember, I think it was either Harry Potter or like Percy Jackson. I was reading the series and I'm like, there's no possible way he could live a normal life after all this. Like, no possible way. And then they just do. It's just like, bam, pow, presto. Like, poor um, Percy's kept on getting like dragged into like many adventures. But like... He, um, like, but it wasn't like he was having, you know, he wasn't ever depressed. Like, I think he would be. Like, I don't think you can ever, you know, live a mundane life after you, like, after you went through the House of Hades. The book, like, I can't really say anything about House of Hades in case you haven't read that book and you're planning on reading it. Because this is not a House of Hades review. But like everything that happened in that book, you cannot go back to a normal life after that. And I liked that um I liked that Simon was uh, depressed, which is a sad thing to say. And I liked that he was struggling for it. Like boy um Baz called him a boy soldier. And I'm like, that's exactly what it is. He was hardwired to be a boy soldier and there's literally nothing you could do to change that. Just like you can't just be like there's no bad guy anymore, relax, chill. So, um, yeah. So I did like that. Um, what I didn't like is um, Simon and Bass's relationship, which I never thought I would ever say before because it was my favorite part of this book, which is something for me to say because I was kind of raised in a family that's against everything. And I'm like, do you know what? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I think I don't. I don't know. I'm not talking about it. I'm just saying that I love these two together as characters, getting away from that stuff. Um. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, right. Yeah. So they go to America, and they're at this Renaissance fair, and like all this stuff happens. They're fighting a horde of vampires, and they're like running in the getaway car, and. Simon just like grabs Baz and just kisses him and you're like now's not the time but great and and then they like drive off and um and like you know before this Simon was like oh, I'm done with everything I think I'm gonna break up with Baz and then then he's like and then he just goes in and like kisses Baz and I'm like okay he's um refilling his sense of purpose he feels like he's important now that he's fighting and defending his um, friends from hordes of vampires even if he's at an extreme uh, disadvantage compared to how he was earlier. And I was like, okay, I get that. But then it kept happening. Like, it's just that like, si like after they were like got away, Simon would kind of like, like drift away from Baz again. And then something crazy would happen. And then he would suddenly want to kiss Baz and snuggle and stuff. And then he would drift away, but then something exciting would happen. And then he would want to snuggle and kiss up to Baz. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like poor Simon si Baz, like Simon has him on like a string and he's just head over heels for Simon. And Oh my gosh, it broke my heart when they were leaving the dam and they were lying together in the back of the truck and Baz is like thinking to himself like, what's the key to like unlock this side of you? How do I get this side of you tomorrow? And I'm just like, it hurts my heart. You can't just, you can't just, uh, they say like, I heard it like as like a recommendation is that like whenever like you want someone to like you and you only have like one date or like you think the state could like make or break your relationship take them to something where it's exciting to keep get their heart pumping and the adrenaline rushing because that like heightens the senses and makes people like fall in love with you quicker so like take them to like a scary movie or take them on a roller coaster and <laughs> that's that's simon 
if you get him, you know, scared for his life, he suddenly falls in love with you and it hurt. It hurt a lot because it was like he was only using um, Simon, um, he was, uh, Simon was only using Baz whenever he almost lost him. And it was like he constantly had to be reminded. I was, uh, I was so, uh, it hurt, it hurt. I feel so bad for Baz. And then Simon still does not admit that he's gay or at least bisexual. Like, I mean, are you <laughs> kidding me? Like they've been, at this point, Simon and Baz have been in a relationship for two freaking years. <laughs> and I understand because being like gay is like a label and it has like a bit of baggage and prejudice that comes with it. Because I know because my family is one of those people that would be like, oh, you're gay. And then, you know, immediately judge that person. And I just live in a family that's like that. And I understand that you might be nervous about that and you don't want to make decisions on your sexuality. And um, because I can relate to that and I don't want to talk about it in this video. Anyway, moving on. But like, you can't be in a relationship with a dude for two freaking years and not admit that you're at least bisexual. Like it's different than being like, oh wait, that person is actually kind of cute and she's the same gender as me but that's different than being in a freaking relationship where you call each other boyfriend for two years it's like telling Baz by not being able to like admit it's like Simon is basically telling Baz is that like I like you but I don't like you enough to <laughs> identify as liking you and it's just there was this one point in the story where they were at that renaissance fair and there was like a bunch of ladies in like low cut dresses and Simon was like thinking in his head and he thinks he's like I think I might be like a Baz only sexual and I'm like you can't do that or at least tell Baz that stop telling Baz that you cannot make up your mind that is just stupid at least say you're bisexual so that's my little rant right there, and there's my sister. No. Anyway, that I'm keeping that in the video because I don't want to shoot this again, and my parents will be home soon, and I don't need them hearing me to hear me ranting about gay people. Anyway, she's deaf. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, what was I gonna talk? Oh yeah, there was this other part in the book where Simon was um, thinking he was in one of his moods where he was drifting away from Baz again. And he's like, I like kissing, but I don't like to be kissed. And he's like, I like touching Baz, but I don't like to be touched. And, uh, and I'm like, you can't, if you're gonna be in a relationship, you have to understand that it's a mutual thing. You can't, you know, give a little and take a little and I know this is probably going to be part of an arc this is why this book the next book in the series can make and break this book because if that's not acknowledged personally by Simon I might riot in this book Simon did have a mild monologue about being a bad boyfriend and honestly I didn't see it really in that book I kind of like got that like Agatha was having her own issues with Simon and feeling that Simon didn't really care about her and um, she was just like the perfect girl and was happy, a perfect ending. And I, I was like, okay, I can kind of see why you're saying you're a terrible boyfriend. But in this book, he's a terrible boyfriend. <laughs> I see that all the way. 100% through, only thinks about himself, never considers Bob's personal feelings, and it makes me want to beat him with a stick. Anyway, moving on. I still somehow, t in a, my own twisted way, enjoyed it. Just because this, these characters are so great. I pity Baz so freaking much. Um, is there anything else I want to talk about on the whole Simon thing? Oh, right! Yes! Okay. So, there was this other time when they are in Las Vegas. And um, Baz is, like, undercover, talking with other vampires. And he's with this one guy named Lamb. And then Lamb is, like, completely, like, kind of a little on to him. And... Simon completely freaks out, and I'm like, you do not get a right to be judged.
jealous if you're not fully committing to your relationship. And there was this other time where they were being held up by these animal creatures in a quiet zone. By the way, quiet zones, I will get to those. Those were interesting. And he was kind of, and then they were kind of like feeling them to see if they had any weapons. And the person that was with Baz was being a little extra feely. And um, Simon completely killed him. <laughs> because he was jealous and I was like you don't get a right to be jealous if you're not gonna commit to our relationship anyway like Baz saw Agatha and um, Simon together for like three years and he didn't really try to commit Agatha did he uh, kill Agatha did he kind of flirt with Agatha to draw her away yes but he did not swing a sword <laughs> anyway yeah Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a pin in Baz's and Lamb's relationship. Do you want? Why not? I'm already here. I'm not gonna put a pin in it, and I'm not restarting this video either for reasons I already said. Anyway, moving on. Why are you? I don't even know. You would listen to this rant, but we're moving on. Anyway, Baz's and um, Lamb's relationship. I have to admit, in like the first time we met Lamb, and they were at this party, and Baz was getting drunk, I was kind of like. I don't know about this lamb guy, but at the same time, Baz is like, this is the best night I've ever had. And I was like, um, I see that. Anyway, Baz was all like, um, let's go. Anyway, Baz was, um, talking, um, to like lamb and he was like this is the best night and then like it tops your nights with Simon and I'm like oh my gosh Simon you're a terrible boyfriend and then they're in the restaurant and they're eating Baz and lamb and this uh, why why is your character named lamb that's a, kind of a stupid name anyways I'm sorry I blew up like she's ever gonna watch this video anyways moving on um that's why I've said a lot on this video I need to stop talking to myself and just talk about the book um, they were in the restaurant, like the Thai relation restaurant, and they start to eat, and Baz's like things pop out, and Lamb looks at Baz, and he's like, "What are you, an animal? Like, why do you have your like um things out? Like, are you a monster?" And then Baz is like, "What?" And he's like, huh, "Um, he's like, just like look at me." And then they're able, Baz is able to like retract his things, and. Uh, Lamb is like, how old are you? And Baz is like, I'm 20. And then Lamb is like, yeah, and I'm 31. How old are you? And Baz is like, I'm 20. And he's like, right. Right. He said it much more sadder in my head. Anyways, moving on. I felt so bad. Like, Baz, I feel so bad for him. And then they, um, Baz, like, drank the rabbit in front of Lamb. And Lamb is like, you are, like, he's like, you're a malnourished child in a repressed nation. And, um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad for Baz. Because not only is his boyfriend in denial that he's gay or at least bisexual, which is, um, and, like, there's already, like, you know, things on gay people, which is also, like, he's being oppressed for that. Also, he's a vampire, and his entire family is pretending he's not a vampire. His friends are like, yeah, we knew it was a vampire, but still that doesn't help that much. He's still living in constant shame with his animal instincts, and he's constantly carrying a burden of shame, and he doesn't even know how to do basic vampire things. He didn't know the vampires could reproduce. He didn't know they lived forever. He's never really talked to a vampire before, aside from Nico and now Lamb. And it's just like, I feel so bad for Baz. I wanted to reach in the book and give him a hug. Not that he was asking for a hug because he's Baz, but like, I just, I wanted Simon to give him a hug. And of course, Simon was all confused and only cared about Baz after they almost nearly died, which is great. So yeah, and I should talk, start talking about Penelope now. Anyways, Penelope. I just said Penelope, didn't I? I mean Agatha. Agatha! Oh my gosh. I was iffy about Agatha throughout the entire book and this book. And then the last chapter, I'm like, okay, I get you, sis. All right, fine. You're great. I get it. 
And then in this book, I completely hate her now. She's worse than Princess Peach. She just gets kidnapped and she's so stupid. Like her, uh, she's already like kind of in this weird retreat thing and she's just going because her friend is there and they're talking about like leveling up and all this weird stuff and they're like, we'll live forever. Now it does kind of just sound like a weird hippie hipster retreat, but then her a boyfriend dude starts asking her whether or not she has her appendix and how she feels about MRIs. And I'm like, run, run. And then Baz, Simon and Penelope cross the country. Sure, she's in danger all because of one phone uh, voicemail telling them to not go and then people in the background being like yeah she shouldn't have her phone and i'm like and also because she didn't post her daily instagram photos and i'm like if i had friends that would cross the country no not just cross the country get out of their own country and then cross a foreign country just to check if i was all right just because I forgot I stopped posting constantly on Instagram, that I would have some pretty solid friends. <sighs> Gosh. So yeah, Penelope. I didn't like Penelope in the beginning of the book. I liked her in the middle. Towards the end, I was like, eh, whatever. I'm going back to Agatha now. Agatha could have rescued herself the entire freaking time. <laughs> Fight, hon. If you can do that freaking fire spell with your mouth glued shut, without a wand, and you were able to take out all those vampires, like sure you were having some weird sister magic going on with Penelope or whatever. You guys were like holding hands in a unit, unit for whatever reason. But if you could have done that, by yourself with your mouth open instead of being glued shut you should have done that ages ago you could have saved yourself and everyone so much more trouble you could have saved Baz and um, Simon a few bullet wounds so yeah the very ending of this book I was like I'm, I'm like this book was coming to a close and I'm like What's, what on earth is the next book going to be about? Which was my question whenever I actually read this. Because I thought everything tied up pretty perfectly. And then it was like, but there is more. And I'm like, I have no idea what this book is going to be about. And then I read it. And I, it was like, I was reading the prologue. And I'm like, literally, all that needs to happen is Baz and Simon need to kiss and make up. And Penelope and Shepard need to get together. And also their families need to not kill them whenever they get home. Those are literally it. And then it's like, and then Penelope runs out like at the very last page. And she's like, what birds in danger? And I'm like. <laughs> and I'm like, of course what birds in danger? Of course, because these heroes don't get a break for a second. Oh, I like that. Anyway. Because that's just how life works. You don't get to break. You don't get to breathe. The last book needs to be good. The last book needs to be amazing in order to make or break this series. Because this book is great. This book is okay. There was a lot of stereotypical, like, Western rule, like, um, America. Although I did like the quiet zones. The quiet zones were a wonderful idea. Like that like, because there's no normals around for miles, there's no words spoken in this area. So therefore you can't cast spells because there, there aren't any normals to provide magic for those spells. I think that's freaking brilliant. The magic in this book is freaking brilliant. And it was kind of a little annoying that Baz and Penny were constantly drained, but at the same time, they were able to just push out a little bit more. But that's all I had left. But then somehow they were able to squeeze a little bit more. But that's all I had left. And I'm like, it's okay. We can get through this book. But it was a good book! Somehow! I don't know! Well, I kind of do know. 
In the beginning of the book, Baz was just making up a list of all the things he hates and it was like the best thing ever and I loved it. And that's, I think, is a good reason just to read this book for Baz's list of things. And I do like this idea that like, um, a character has like depression after, you know, uh, constantly being the chosen one and like, come on, you can't really just go back to a normal life. And that's not how the real life works. I did like that Simon had therapy, even though he stopped going to it. I think that's a great part of the healing process. I do like that Simon's going to get his wings cut off. They're kind of useful sometimes, but at the same time, I'm like, why? Why the tail? Like, literally, the tail is just a joke. Like, I think he was able to, like trip a few people in like the vampire the first vampire rumble at during the renaissance but other than that it's just i think rainbow Row sometimes forgets they even has a tail it's just the wings and the wings are a constant bother to like make them disappear off but i did like that like a lot of baz's spells weren't working because he's used to all the British st shit, um, sayings and he doesn't know any American ones. And he's like, man, I should have watched more Friends reruns. And I was like, <sighs> I have so much sun in my room. So that's why I'm in this corner of the screen constantly. Anyways, moving on. Um, is there anything else I want to say about this book? I don't know. They're definitely not going back to America. That's for sure. It was stereotypical America, just like a lot of nothing. They had like a little band of like weird animals that attacked them in one quiet zone. Like it was like a walking, talking skunk. I like that Simon didn't know what a skunk was. There was like a lot of like things in here that like, um, they're like, how do you not know what that is? And they just don't know because they're English. They're very, very English. And then they're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is great and yeah um i can see why baz would have gotten together with lamb at least before lamb betrayed them because you know he's been oppressed his entire life and he's in a relationship that's broken and he had someone that kind of almost got it but no he's obsessed with Simon and I'm kind of glad because I did not like Lamb in the end after they betrayed them that uh eat two fruit spell should have worked at the end you cast it on well I guess they were in a quiet zone I'm like we use that in America not commonly but I read the Shakespearean play and we all read it out loud and there was enough of us saying it, I think. Anyways, how many normals does it take to say a word for it to become powerful enough to be a spell? That's something interesting to think about. Yeah. So there's my little rant. Is there literally anything else I could say? Baz. I feel like Simon likes Baz a lot for his looks and not the person inside, which is not a good sign for a relationship. And I want them to be in a good relationship because I like how their personalities contrast and stuff. But Simon is not, you know, really completely there. And I don't want them to be together if it's going to be a constant strain on Baz. But I know it's going to be a constant strain on Baz if they're apart because he's already just so head over heels for Simon. And it hurts. I wonder how this Simon became this Simon. Well, like, it's obviously the same person. He got depressed. And he, he said he was a selfish boyfriend. Well, guess what? He is a selfish boyfriend. Um, he needs to give a little. Just a little bit. Like when he was like, I just want you to, st uh, I'm like, I don't want, I don't like, I like kissing, but I don't want to be kissed. And I'm like, what do you want Bass to do? Do you want Bass just to stand there like a statue and you can just have your way with him? That was, that was a terrible thought. 
anyways yeah it was a surprisingly I don't know how I liked this it was it had great world building the characters are great Shepard was a normal person that like reads the forums and I'm like that would be in today I like I like Shepard he was nice. I kind of hope that he and Penelope get together. That that's what it looks like. What's gonna end up coming? Hope Cyanon gets his wings off because I think it's important for him to go full normal, so he can fully detach himself from this world, and he has nothing else to like cling to, and nothing else to um, run to every next time he gets depressed. So he just has to face it, which is probably not the best way if you're depressed to do. I mean, I've tried it, and it doesn't really work, and we're not talking about that either. Anyway, I need to stop dropping personal hints and weird videos. I mean, not weird. They're decent videos, right? Anyway, yeah. If you can't tell, my book is rainbow. My bookshelf is rainbow. I just wanted to point that out to you guys. It's weird. I might do a book review on that, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Some twisted way, I recommend this book. If you've listened to all my spoilers, I think I practically tore apart most of the novel. I didn't say much about Shepard, so there's a surprise for you. And I didn't say anything about Brad and either. So read the book to find out who they are if you haven't already read the book and you're still watching this video. This book I 100% recommend. It was beautiful. I think you should read Harry Potter before you read this book, though. I think you would just get more out of it. Um, this book was not a Harry... Like, I've read this book, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like Harry Potter, but like Rainbow Rowl style. No, this was a Rainbow Rowl book. Somehow it felt like a contemporary, even though it's not a contemporary. Well, I guess that's just... I have just started associating contemporary with Rainbow Rowl's writing style. Because this also felt a little contemporary, even though it's totally fantasy but this is definitely feels contemporary for some weird reason but yeah um, Penelope is great I think it was very healing for her so she could start listening to people more which she needs to do because I didn't notice that about her that she never listened and that was kind of a little annoying character flaws and people working through them right Simon you're gonna work through that, right? Hopefully. Fingers crossed. The third book, they have to work um, through it. Unless we're getting a fourth book. Or a fifth book. I just feel like, you know, you can keep on going with this. Just don't go too far. I'm still reading those Wings of Fire books. And I feel like they've gone a little too far. But I'm not talking about those. I'm not talking about those. I read so many books. Anyway definitely read this book if you want to touch this book it's up to you I'm gonna end the video here